Hi there, I'm Thack. Welcome to Thack Ironworks. In today's video, we are making a deer head. So, uh, I got a commission. Most of my, uh, oddly enough, for the channel, most of the stuff that I make here, I just, I'm doing stuff that I want to do and I'm making it up myself. This is an actual paid gig, so it's kind of cool. So, I've gone ahead and mocked up a wire frame for this uh, deer head to get my scale and shape, rough shape to work with. Um, this is not the finished product. What we're making this out of is silicon bronze is for the the body and then just steel for the antlers. So um, should be a pretty interesting build, fairly complex. Um, size wise, this is getting on the unwieldy size. It's big enough to be problematic, but uh, this is the scale that I'm working with. So let's begin. Um, I'm gonna start with the antlers. So I have a few antlers here. I'm using these as my model. So I'm going to do up a cardboard template to, to make the main branch here. Um, and then I'm gonna forge out solid pieces here. So the main branch will be made out of two pieces of sheet, hollowed out, welded together. Um, and then we'll go from there. Let me show you. Based on the scale of the deer head, I've come up with the branch, main branch size for the antlers of this. So I've got an inside and outside because of the curvature, there's a slight difference in um, the sizing of these two pieces. So I'll just trace these out and cut them out with a Beverly. This is 18 gauge sheet steel. So 10 minutes into the inside curve of the antler, and this is by far the trickiest one. In that, this one curves both this way, but also has to wrap around this way. And steel does not want to do that. Think about paper, it's the same sort of uh, principle. It certainly does not want to do those two um, divergent movements at the same time. So quite tricky. So after about 10 minutes of working this piece just milled cold, I'm going to heat it up to anneal it, get it a little softer and see if I can coax it around. I need to get a little bit more of a curvature and then correct the trough curvature throughout there. Okay, so I have roughed out at least the one antler here, and I believe this is what I'm kind of going for. Going with my, got my opposite one here. We're going for a bigger um, scale, obviously, than that, and probably more points on it. Um, so this allows me that. But I'm, what I'm trying to do is get this sweep, which is kind of weird because it's it's kind of in a spiral. Um, twisting and turning at the same time and it's kind of an abstract tough to get your head around anyway I think I pretty much got it there so now what follows uh, Eric pan down to the floor you can see I've forged out a whole pile of tines um, I think I need to spend several hours uh, cutting welding and tacking both of my pieces together and get my rack all tack together and then following that a lot of welding and grinding so quite a bit of work ahead of us but I think I'm now beginning to see the shape so good times ahead so the construction of the antlers is forged and fabricated now we're into the fabricated part we've done the forging we've got our pieces and I've tacked this together if you'll remember this portion here is two pieces of sheet metal that were formed and then welded together these are solid forged pieces on there that's got a little bit of weight to it so I've got the pieces tacked together and I've got more or less the right um, look to it however like if I look at my um, fakey little antlers here they're fairly round they don't have a whole lot of shape there but when I go to old mother nature an actual antler um, I look at this and it's got things like this, which is this flattened spot with a little spur or tine coming off of there. Um, but all the transitions have this nice webbing in there. Um, so what I want to do at this point now is start um, filling in these areas here. So going from this to something more like this. Ouch, hot, hot, hot. 
So you can see this one I've already started on where I built, built up a little bit of a ridge there and put in some webbing there. So I've just rough welded that in. That will need to be ground then, um, but I'll just demonstrate a little bit of that so you get the idea of how this all plays out. The welder. So I'll, I'll do the webbing in this one here. These are both solid pieces so I can have this up at full voltage um, and really lay into there. It gets a little bit more precarious when I'm down to the sheet metal. It's 18 gauge. I have to slowly just stitch it in. Um, I might show you a little bit of that, but this is much easier to do it this way. So, that's now filled in there. I'll get in there with the grinder, um, do as much as I can with an angle grinder, but then also we'll have to come in with the bench file and die grinders to get that final shape in there. You get the idea on that. Um, I also want to do something more like this piece here, uh, in which case I have forged a little piece there. And now I want to, so I'm just going to tack that in there. All right, so now I've got that piece there. I've got my little scraps of sheet metal here. So now I'm gonna put those in and my thumb is on fire. Awesome, I love it. People always wonder why I wear cotton gloves because they start on fire. I prefer that to a leather glove. Um, uh, the leather gloves tend to shrivel up over time when you're welding with them and they turn into like bacon fingers. It's really hard to manipulate. The cotton gloves are so cheap, I don't mind that I wear them out like that. Tried Kevlar, doesn't really, I don't know, not into it. So don't leave anything in the comments about cotton gloves, please. Thank you. That is now tacked into place there. So our sample there so we've got something approximating that sort of shape there that adds a lot of visual interest much more so than that looks very cut and well so this is a process and you might be asking why don't I forge more of this shape in there and I found doing antlers it's so subtle the way the way the planes change and stuff like that that I can't really um, pre-guess which way I should have my orientations going. When I go to put them together, they all look wrong. So I just have to find out, just have more um, luck establishing the planes with building up the weld as I go there. So it's, it's a bit of a process um, building up with weld and then grinding and then back to welding and back and forth to get that. But I, I find I get a, a much better sweep um, and yeah, what can I say? Uh, one last thing I'm going to show you before I send my camera away because I've probably got, uh, I don't know, five, six hours of this um, to get these into position. These, <clears throat> don't even know what this is called. This knobby stuff on here um, on the bottom of the antler. I have found a pretty cool thing that you can do with your welder. I'm going to take my MIG, I'm going to bring the voltage down a little bit. I'm going to turn the wire speed up to full. Um, so looking at these things here, they're basically, they're vertical lines of these dots. So you want to do everything that you were told not to do with MIG welding. Um, so what I'm getting is just enough penetration to get it to stick there, but it's basically bouncing off and creating these little things here. Here I actually ran a bead. I'm going to have to grind that away but I just find if I run enough parallel lines like this I end up with a pretty good approximation of that effect it's kind of neat um, and then I'll often grind just a little bit off just to um, transition it all works out quite nice so um, we're gonna part ways for a little while here. You're gonna leave me here with my welder and my grinder and I'm gonna get down and dirty with this stuff. Spend a couple hours and let's see what I end up with. So, here's before. And then let's see what the after is gonna look like. See you soon. Hey. Much time has elapsed. I've spent much time putting this together, cutting, 
the welding, grinding, welding, grinding, and then still, um, at the end of it, still holes forming in the sheet metal where I've ground too thin and then heated that up in the forge. Anyway, we're not gonna dwell on that. I just need a little bit of patching, but here we have it. And that is what I've come up with. I'm pretty happy about that. I think I could speak for everybody on the planet that uh, an impressive rack is just a joy to behold. And uh, nature's bounty. Like, uh, it's not about size per se, it's more about symmetry and shape, I think. And that's the, just the sweeping majesty of it all and the defiance of gravity, all that stuff. But I wax nostalgic. Let's get down to brass tacks here. So I've got my antlers. Now I'm gonna get my wireframe head. So I've got my head here now. Let's just get these things in place. I've put some stems there that should get this more or less where they need to be. I've got my little model here that I got from Wayfair. The Wayfair is uh, code for almost garbage. I guess we're not getting a sponsorship from them. Uh, but gives me enough of a um, guide to to get these mounted in the right orientation. So got them on there. I'm just gonna tack this in place and then we'll see what it looks like. That is it. That is the antlers now. You can see um, I was working with a blue scotch plate wheel there. I'm pulling up the highlights on these little nodules here. I'm also using uh, right here some 80 grit emery paper and just hand sanding some of the areas there to pull up some highlights and give it a nice subtle finish. So this antler is done. This one is not. Not sure if you can pick that up, um, the subtlety of that now, but I think it will make for a really nice finish. Uh, I, think I need to do some adjusting to get my rack balance there, but you get the idea. Now that is the easy part. Now I have to start working on the bronze sheet for the actual head. Let's begin. And now we begin the skin. So we're using silicone bronze, 18 gauge um, bronze sheet, and we're going to put a skin over this entire thing, basically recreating this shape, more or less. This is my little model that I got here, my cat, if you will. Uh, this one I find is maybe a little benign. I want to make mine a little bit more sinister. So uh, I'm going to have to alter the design as we go along. But it gives me the right proportions anyway. and gives me a, a guide. Um, I've also got a number of little statues and I got some Google papers. I don't have them here right now um, to, for references to be able to get my final shape. I've also created this wireframe, which is a rough approximation of the final shape. It's got the right size. Uh, scale and everything is here. So I just need to start forming the pieces. I may have to modify some of the high points on this wireframe as I get into it. But let's stop talking and let's get right into it. I've <clears throat> taken some cardboard then and created some templates showing where the ear is going to be. I decided to do the ear in two pieces, leaving a seam on the back where it's not really going to be visible up against the wall. Um, this will make it easier for me because I am wrapping these pieces around. I could have did this in one piece, but that could have proved to be problematic for doing some shaping. It's easier to do it in two pieces. Um, well, the seam after. So that is the template for that. Also, for the neck portion, I've just done a template which is following this shape here, a little bit oversized. <laughs> Um, starting with the easy shapes here, the neck and the ears, kind of wading into the whole thing. And then from there, I'm gonna have to get into the face and finally all the connector bits and pieces. Um, and then this will all be TIG welded, silicon bronze together to become one final piece. Here we go. I have traced with a Sharpie onto the bronze. Now I go to the Beverly Shear and cut it out. So the pieces are cut out, now I'm just going to heat it up, bring it up to some color and quench it and that will anneal it and make it nice and soft to begin working.
And now it is soft and ready to move. Okay, so shit. When I was annealing the last time, I was uh, not really paying attention. It only takes a second for this to get too hot, and then it's just going to uh, melt or burn away. As you can see here, this just formed a crack, and uh, that's it. At this early stage, I'm not going to try to work around that and repair that. Um, I'm just going to start up with another piece, um, and then begin with that and I will save this piece I will cut out other sections of it cut around that piece there but um, that is a cautionary tale for you people looking to do this in a cool forge you got to be ever vigilant so starting over ah! and now the face so I've got this piece cut out here my wire frame this will go on like that couple simple hammer strokes and it should be done. Take us about a minute. I need to get some real depth um, above the eye here. So what I'm gonna do is hot raise that portion just to get us roughed into the ballpark for that. I find it so much nicer to work things hot when I can. All right, so I've roughed out the approximate shape there. I've got this compound curve in here uh, on the snout and I've got the brow coming up and everything is more or less where it needs to be. Now I'm gonna start putting some lines in. You've got my, uh, my model here, so I need to start putting some of these lines into there, dropping things down and then start roughing out the real estate for the eye. Um, this is a back and forth process. Let's begin. All right, so we're deep into the project now. Uh, I've got my two face halves, which I've since bolted together. Um, this is the kind of thing where you might ask, why wouldn't I just do this in one piece? Um, the short answer is access. I, to get into something like that, it's hard to get the tools and stuff in. It's easier to do pieces that only ha um, have so much curvature to them. There's pros and cons to that approach. The, the con to that is it's really hard to keep the sides symmetrical. And what I found is that actually bolting the piece together, I can get a really good view um, of it locked in position and get things symmetrical. Because when you get the eyes off, it just, the whole thing looks wonky. So. Um, that's the point I'm at with this. I've got it roughed out. Uh, we're about 75% of the shape right now. Um, but I'm just going to put that one aside. Um, this takes a lot of mental energy to, to do. What I need to do now is do the snout. And the reason I'm doing the snout is a separate piece rather than having these here. So the last time I did a deer, I did it with the pieces coming out here. It was really hard to get the nostrils when I put the piece together to be symmetrical because you're never actually seeing them together until they actually go together. And they, just slight variations in angles um, can be quite apparent. So easier for me to do this out of one piece. I'm gonna raise the dome and then the weld will be more discreet back in behind here. At least that is the theory. So let's begin. I've got my piece of bronze here with a little bulge there. What we're gonna do is get that in the forge and start hot raising a nice big bulge on there that I can then do the um, further shaping. Let's begin. All right, while I'm wearing, waiting for my little snout dome to cool off, let's show you behind the scenes, I'm working on the inner ear hair stuff. And so what I did was made this inner piece here and I used put some hammer texture into there. I'm, I'm trying to figure out a stylized hair pattern and I think I'm coming up with something here. But then um, 
once I've got this in here, I need to get more uh, shape into that. So I put it into the pitch, this, so this is in my pitch board now, um, and then it turns into this after I spend a little bit of time with some chisels moving some pieces around um, and creating this effect. So we'll then go into the ear and tuck inside like that, creating a plausible shape, I think. So anyway, that's what's going on in the background. Let's get back to the snout. All right, I'm about a week into this project, maybe a little bit more. I, I'm losing track of the dates here and uh, long hours. Anyway, we're getting to the point where we got the last few pieces here. Let me just grab my uh, wireframe here. So today we are going to rough out the back of the neck, two pieces I did for that, and the jaw. And uh, these seem to be pretty simple and boring pieces, but they're often very deceptively complex to make them um, merge with its corresponding pieces here. So um, once I've got these roughed out, then I'm gonna take all these components and I have to start fitting them together. And I, uh, I'm encouraged and also discouraged there is a long way to go from here. All right, I just wanna do a brief interlude before I dive into the shaping of the face, which is gonna be spiritually devastating for me. Um, so this is a kind of a nice, easy payoff time for this. Um, I've got my three pieces of the ear are finally shaped and come together. Um, and I've now got this tacked here with the TIG welder. So this is tacked in place. And what I'm doing is just bringing this edge down to lock everything into place here. And this will become the finished edge for this. Uh, again, what I'm doing is stylized and I've got to decide, you know, where um, I deviate from anatomically correct to, to something that is going to work and be good enough. Um, I actually like sculpture that is not 100% anatomically correct, that when you get up close you see how it was put together, um, so it has an illusion at, at, at different distances um, and reveals itself when you get up close. That to me I find very exciting. Um, that's strictly my uh, take on it, but I think a lot of other people appreciate that sort of art as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna pull down my edge here. So, uh, getting down to some finer detail now, what I've just done is outline the eye, put in an eyelid there. Uh, so that really helps to punch up the eye. Um, but what I need to do now is get subtle and play with the, the depths and the balances there. And I think what I'm actually gonna do for the eye ball itself is it's always nice to have some uh, shine there a difference and rather than polishing that I think what I'm going to do is take a chrome trailer hitch ball now stay with me um, cut it in half and actually have it inserted cut out the copper here and have that inside there so we have a, a chrome uh, um, on antiqued bronze which I think will be a nice contrast I think that's what I'm going to do we'll have to see anyway what I'm doing right now is trying to establish the fur line on this um, um, head here and much like a cooking show I'm going to now jump ahead and show you what I was just working on so I don't know if the camera can pick up the subtlety of this um, based on the lighting here but essentially what I've done is um, established what the grain line if you will of the hair or fur is and so it kind of radiates out from the snout there and comes back. Um, and then I've taken the various little 
triangular bulges, the, the various muscular um, uh, features there, and tried to work with them as they are in shape as much as possible, putting the grain line in. Um, there's gonna have to be some adjustment after the fact, but I need to do this um, now before I really get into the finer detail. I, I need to establish my fur line, and then from there I'm going to be still doing some final shaping. But anyway, let's get into this. This is a little bit tedious, but it is a necessary step. So I've got my various stakes here of different um, girth that I can work over depending on what area I'm working on. And I'm using a very small cross peen um, that's well radius and that is what I'm using to establish this fur line. Before, after, before, after. I don't know if uh, the camera is picking up the subtlety of that, but I think once I've got this antique patina and, and polish out the highlights, it will catch the, the fur line um, in the lighting. I think it's gonna look great. So anyway, uh, let's shift gears and go back to some rough forming. Um, I wanna get the back of the neck um, fitted onto the frame. That's the last two pieces I really need to kind of uh, get into their shape. So let's do that. Okay, so just before I get into that, I just wanna show you the ears I actually um, had them welded yesterday, so they're together, they're a complete piece now, so you're kind of getting an idea of, of what the final finish on this is going to look like. So, uh, fairly exciting for, for me to be at this stage of the game, see things starting to take shape now, but I still so much to do. So far to go. Sometimes I find myself uh, with, uh, where do I go now? <laughs> That's where I am right now. Basically, I've got this little hoodie for a deer here. And uh, now, what's, what's my next phase of operation? And I guess what it is, is to transition um, the neck piece into the back of the neck. Um, I have to, uh, there's not a whole lot going on here other than the, the change in plane, but. I think I need to transition the fur and have some sort of plausible um, underlying musculature that makes sense here um, just to tie those pieces together. And then I may have to actually um, bolt together the rest of the head, um, sands the wire frame there, and get all these pieces positioned together, see where they are, and then start uh, making the transitions um, between them gel together a little bit better. So I'm confused at this point. Um, uh, hopefully you are as well. So let's see what we can come up with. Several days have elapsed since uh, we last hung out, my gentle viewers, and what I did, uh, I spent an afternoon getting one antler in the proper orientation and that was, wow, that was a task. Anyway, so I've got the one in place there. I've got my other antler now, which I want to get its corresponding stump put on there that I can attach it on. I really worked on different systems trying to do this and I came up with this idea of being able to bolt it on here and get these so that I can balance them out. I want to have these guys with some form of symmetry here. I actually had to um, alter this antler to get it more symmetrical. Even though, well, good old mother nature, I, I notice a lot of antlers are, they're wildly asymmetrical, but I wanted this to have a more um, aesthetically pleasing, so symmetry. Anyway, this is what I'm doing right now is trying to get this piece fitted to the head and then fitted to that. So two different operations then to get this onto there, once we got that mounted on there, then I've made some progress, but not an easy task.
Okay, so eyeballs are always kind of a, uh, a sticky thing with uh, sculpture, trying to get something. Um, it's very easy to have that dead eye look and that, that doesn't sell very well. And there's different ways you can approach that. Um, usually when doing metal sculptures, if you can polish out the eye and at least have something that gleams, uh, you're gonna have more liveliness and uh, life to it. I decided with this, it's real bitch to really kind of get in and polish something into in that area like that. So I thought, what if I could add something in? And I was looking at trailer hitch balls, nice chrome trailer hitch ball, polished and shiny. So I thought, why don't I do a trailer hitch ball? So I went to my local automotive place and I bought a pack of three trailer hitch balls that actually have holes in the center. So much less material to cut. So I cut my two and five sixteenths, the biggest one, appropriate size I cut it in half and then I cut it into quarters that quarter then becoming a piece that I can put in for the eyeball and now I'm just gonna weld that in from the back so let's go to the welder and tack that in place god damn it Something like that. So from across the room, that should catch a glint of light and just kind of give the illusion of life. Um, I was considering getting like taxidermy eyeballs. You can get those, but I thought that just might seem a little contrived for a bronze sculpture. So hopefully the client is cool with this. I think it looks neat. Anyway, moving on. So I'm hoping the camera is picking this up here, but I, I put a fur texture in. And again, stylized, but something that I'm hoping will catch the light and create the illusion of fur. I think it looks pretty good. I'm not sure if you're picking that up. But essentially what I did was I drew out a soapstone. I drew out a bias in the fur. So it had line, directional lines. And then from there, I took a hammer, which was modified um, with this little edge on here. And this is... where I followed those lines. Simple as that, time consuming, but it did create that. And I think it's subtle, but I think it's going to um, hopefully give the illusion of fur when this is all said and done. All right, so at a certain point, you just have to say, fuck it and uh, start welding it together. I've been piecing this together so many times now, I just have to start getting in. So we're gonna, I've got my resident welder fish here. Um, he's gonna start taking this the seams shut and I'm gonna have to be closing them up as we go. So we'll just get a little shot of him starting. So Fish, I need you to basically weld the tight spots around there and then from there I'll have to go. Okay, I've done my rough grinding on the welds here and now what I have to do is start blending all this in. What I wanna do is anneal this this whole area here. So now things are getting really touchy. I, I really don't want to screw up and melt this or burn it in any way. So let's go to the forge and get it heated up and then we'll see if we can do a little bit more blending over my stake. It's really tough um, to get access into this tiny little point out here. So I'm reduced to working off my brick iron here and trying to get some movement there. Let's go to the forge. Okay, so things are happening. We got uh, the snout welded together and I've ground that and you probably can't make it out very well on the camera, but I've done some texturing there to blend that in. Now I've had my guy Fish just TIG up the back two pieces here. So I've got my weld seams, which I'm gonna have to grind, but before I do that, I have to do a little shaping. I had to, there was some distortion here, I had to bring that out. Um, and now what I'm doing is adding the uh, antler nubs on there. Um, I realized um, during the process, there's no way I was gonna get these two pieces to meet and 
get this highly specific area where it needs to be for the antlers to come off at a very specific angle. So I had to make these guys up and now what I'm doing is just um, fitting them on and then we will start welding them on. I think there might be a little bit of filling in there. Also I can start um, pounding out some of the distortions, evening things out. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I've got my other antler nub and I'm just starting to rough fit that one in place. So that's it. All right, so I got my two nubs bolted into place here and I'm gonna get uh, Fish, my TIG welder here, to TIG them in place. So we're gonna start um, here where they're most visible, get them tacked in and then he'll be um, stopping and tapping things down and working the way back here. We've got a bit of a gap here which you'll probably leave open for now. Um, but for these guys, basically, I want to see you get the front third there. And then I will do some more work on it. Home stretch. If you can consider the home stretch about a day and a half away from completion, but we're getting pretty close. I'm thinking right now we're going to be putting the ears on. Uh, so this is starting to look very deerish, but now it's time to get these guys on something like that. So TIG is ready, or fish is ready with the TIG welder. Let's start tacking these in place. The antlers are in place, so uh, we more or less have the, the final effect here. Um, I This morning, I've attached the antlers, bolted them through, and then I got in with my little MIG and I actually did more little nodules at the bottom, which at the same time was fusing the steel to the bronze. So now everything is fixed in place rigidly. I've got my points symmetrical as they need to be, uh, and everything's looking good. And I. Uh, polish this with scotch Bright product just to get it to a baseline for patina. It's not going to end up this shiny. Uh, I'm going to do something with a more antique patina, obviously. So we have one last uh, structural step to do, and that is to attach the wall plate to it. What I want to do is taking it on at some spots, but then actually fold the pieces over. I'm just waiting for my welder fish to show up. He's on his way, he'll be here in five minutes. Um, but in the meantime, I think what I'll do is bolt this in place, get it ready for the first couple tacks. Then we'll have to grab the torch and carefully heat this, fold it over without distorting or burning this. This is going to be exciting and dangerous. Okay, so we folded that around now. We need to do um, a little bit more welding in there and then some grinding to just kind of flatten out some of the wrinkles, but more or less in place there. Fish, come on into frame here for a second. Okay, a fish, a deer, and a thack walk into a bar. If you can come up with the punchline, you win this stag head. So leave it in your comments below. I'm interested to see what you come up with. Anyway, moving on. At long last, uh, one final step, I have to put some patina on this. This I had shined up in preparation for that so that I could get a more even coat of that. Um, before I do that, I just uh, a couple of comments. I think I'm quite happy with the balance between anatomical correctness and the stylized elements that I incorporated in this. I think it works. Uh, I'm pleased with it. Hope my client is pleased with it. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get going on to the patina. So I'm, what I'm using is Antique Black, uh, and they've got a code number. This is a Sculpt Nouveau, Sculpt Nouveau product. So I'm gonna be putting that on, that's gonna blacken things up. Then I will neutralize it and then buff it out. 
As you will see after that, then I am going to put on a Sculpt Nouveau metal wax, the clear metal wax, followed by their metal oil. Again, a Sculpt Nouveau product, um, and that will be actually oil rub bronze. So not the chocolate brown that your bathroom fixtures are that are oil rub bronze. This is gonna be the actual oil rub bronze, a real thing. And using all Sculpt Nouveau products, and you might be asking yourself, is that getting a kickback from these people? Are they sponsoring his videos? No, they are not, but I think they should be. If you think they should be and you're a super fan, I think you should contact them and say, hey, get sponsor Thack's videos. I'm gonna contact them and, and say that. Anyway, let's begin. So I'm into the finishing now. I've got several hours to go. So at this point, I'm just gonna say goodbye and uh, we'll finish off with our beauty shots as is typical. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Please leave your comments below. Um, consider sponsoring us on Patreon so uh, help us make more of these videos, that sort of thing. And I had a fun time doing this. I can't wait to hear from you guys. I will see you in the next video. Back out. See ya!